Our Racing Association presents the 1988 Bud Light Marathon Offshore Challenge TV special. Yours truly, Jake Rhodes, along with you right here on TCI Channel 5 for a, a look at last week's race. Yes, the race is over, and the 1988 APBA circuit is underway. We're going to take a look at some footage from last weekend's race and to talk about some of the things that happened, the accidents and the rough water. And we're going to talk with County Commissioner Mike Pudo, yeah, who's with us on the studio set right now, <laughs> along with John Carbonell, race coordinator and chairman of the uh, Bud Light Marathon Offshore Challenge. We have some footage coming up, guys, and uh, a lot of exciting stuff to talk about offshore. And so don't forget, offshore returns to the Keys November for the World Cup Championships right here in Key West. We got race footage from last weekend's race coming up right here on TCI Channel 5 as the 1988 Bud Light Marathon Offshore TV special continues right here. We'll be right back. On the screen right now, Mike. Oh That's yeah. neat. The magic of TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, this I think is uh, Swiss Shore Motor Yachts, the boat that won the uh, open class in Marathon last week, averaging 83 miles per hour. Had that boat dialed in real well, didn't they, John? Yeah, she's running real good attitude. Errol Lanier, the throttle man for that boat, really likes the rough water, for, and that's unusual for a cat, isn't it, John? That one there is uh, a little bit heavier than the other cats, and that's why they need a little bit of rough water to... First time the Superboats race in Marathon, and here's a guy that's, uh, that's done a lot of great racing in Superboat, Al Copeland, the winningest boat in offshore, the Popeye's Diet Coat Challenger. That's an unusual boat, John, the Chunky Express, uh, a 47 DV Apache that didn't do really that well in the race. It finished third, but they had some problems there. Oh, it's a new boat, and they just had uh, finished rigging it and really didn't have the time to test it and get the bugs out of it. But Beautiful I think it'll boat. be. Oh, I, yes. Yeah, I think it'll be real competitive later on. There's a guy, you know, right there, Bob Idoni, that 38 foot Apache cat, the Canada Homes, finished uh, second overall in the open class, and they really had that boat moving out, John. Yeah, and they stopped about uh, three minutes for Jesse James when they had the accident, so they might have uh, had a good chance of winning. Exactly. They were averaging about 80 miles per, uh, 80 miles an hour on the course. Beautiful boat, Mike. Well, they were down in uh, Marathon about a week and a half, two weeks before the race itself practicing, and uh, just watching them uh, really open it up when the water was, uh, was pretty well flat calm that weekend. And, I mean, they were just out there roaring. There's the Jesse there James go. right there, 35-foot Conquest cat. And this is a before their flip on the uh, course. Uh, they're moving real well there, John. Moving out pretty yeah. good. This is just prior to the accident. We what exactly happened when they flipped over? They uh, flipped completely over and back. They were under the water for approximately 30 to 40 seconds before they could eject themselves out of the capsule and come up to the top. John Antonelli, last year's winner, the Spirit of America, with his brand new Arnis and Surface Drives, and unfortunately, John, who uh, went over 100 miles an hour on the course last year, had problems on the first lap, as many of the racers did, John. Yeah, I think they wasn't really expecting it to be as rough as it was on the outside, and maybe they overdid it a little bit to blow the, their engines. The boat that finished third in open class was the Coors Light Silver Bullet, Craig Berry, and uh, A.J. Roberts, Jr., former world championship racer, in a 38-foot Cougar Catamaran that uh, finished third. and. Uh, is really moving out there. The rough waters were surprising, John. It's the first time in three years in this race it's been rough. Yeah, and that's kind of caught everybody by surprise. And one other interesting thing about the Coors Light boat, that used to be Dick Fulham's boat. Exactly, it's still crazy. Well, and also the uh, the uh, the Swisher used to be the ACR Systems boat when uh, when they spun out in uh, uh, in Marathon at the last race. But exactly. what you're seeing now is the racers here, being they're not bouncing too bad, they are on the back side now coming back in uh, you notice the bridge is in the uh, background, and they're getting ready to take a right-hand turn and head back to the Gulf of Mexico. So they're not going to be bouncing too bad here, but uh, when the uh, Jesse James had flipped over, uh, they just had the, going down Hawks Channel there, the seas were coming in at a different angle, and uh, just caught the boat uh, basically by surprise. He gave it a little bit of juice, and next thing you know, he was airborne, and away he went. You can see the boat's really moving out, the rougher water in Marathon. And uh, John, the uh, Jesse James did have problems with us uh, between uh, checkpoint two and three. Right, about halfway between two and three is where they... You can see a good shot there of the, uh, the safety capsules that the Swift Shore boat has. Bob Kaiser and Errol Lanier are protected in, the, in that boat, yet the top of the capsule is open so that they can't get out. Same type of capsules the uh, Jesse James had. 
and uh, Swisher had the kind of water that Errol Lanier told me he wanted. It was rough, and uh, he really moved out. He got uh, 83 miles an hour on the course. The winningest boat in offshore history right there, Popeye's Diet Coke, the 50-footer. Didn't have his new boat ready, John, but uh, he did well for himself, uh, considering it was the first race of the Super Bowl to Marathon. Yeah, the new boat, they're still trying to dial that in. they got a few problems, and uh, uh, they should probably have it by mid-season. Excellent shot of the Popeye's Diet Coke 50-foot Cougar catamaran as they finished first, averaging just uh, right over 80 miles an hour. Well, that, what was funny about that was that that's, uh, you can see them running there with all four of their engines. They only finished on two. Exactly. And uh, when they were coming through on last leg, going through the seven-mile bridge, uh, the people that were watching it had said that uh, as he was coming through, he had such a high rooster tail that it was sending water up to the bridge. <laughs> he had a little room to get through the bridge, too, huh, John? <laughs> yes, a little room. <laughs> On the uh, backward leg. But uh, I think it's a good thing. The Super Bowls are in Marathon now, and, uh, and they'll be racing again next year, I'm sure. But uh, Popeye's doing well for himself, and uh, he was uh, the one uh, Super Bowl that uh, finished uh, real well. John. As a matter of fact, the uh, second Super Bowl to finish, quite interestingly enough, was the uh, was the uh, flying blind boat from MGM, which uh, was a fountain marine boat. Well, they uh, what they did, they took one long lap, which was what it was required of them, and then after that, they took the short laps from uh, Sombrero back in. Uh, so they actually ended up finishing uh, fourth because of the fact that they cut the laps short. So the Flying Blind and the Caliente were the two boats from MGM Pictures as they were filming for Blue Lightning, their film release for 1989. When we come back, I'll talk to John about some of the accidents that happened at the Bud Light Marathon Offshore Challenge. And we'll talk to Mike Cuto, who's also head of the TDC. And we'll talk about offshore racing and what it means to the Keys. Coming up, as the 1988 Bud Light Marathon Offshore Challenge continues, the TV special on TCI Channel 5. Welcome back to TCI Channel 5 with the 1988 Bud Light Marathon Offshore Challenge TV Special. JR here with you for the Concord Public Offshore Powerboat Racing Association, along with TDC Chairman Mike Pudo and race organizer John Carbonell. And uh, coming up, right at the, the end of this segment, we'll be playing a very special video for you, which was shot in memory to the still crazy crew that uh, uh, tragically died in an accident in 1985 in the World Championships here in Key West called Wild Boys. You may have seen it. You might remember we'll be playing it again for you in tribute to the Still Crazy crew coming up here on the TV special. But first, Mike, offshore racing is really big in the Keys. Everybody is tuned into it. Everybody is, is awed by it. And we have two great races to start the 1988 APBA circuit, the, the marathon race, and then we've been so fortunate in years past to uh, have the World Championships, which will be coming again to Key West in November. TDC's behind it and uh, they're the ones that uh, make uh, funds available to bring the races to the Keys. And how important is offshore? Well, the offshore uh, racing is, uh, I can say it's uh, my favorite word, it's awesome. Uh, when you talk about the first race of the year that's being held, that was held in Marathon, uh, in talking with the hotel and motel people, the entire community of Marathon had between uh, 95 and 98 percent occupancy. Uh, some of the hotels had 100% occupancy. They were very pleased. It was like being right in the middle of the season. And uh, it was just, it was great for them. It was great for the community because they buy gas, they go to the restaurants, uh, they play golf when they had a little bit of time because some of them came in uh, early part of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and most of them stayed for anywhere from, uh, from uh, four to seven days. So it's, and it's real great for the community and they stayed as far away as, uh, as Duck Key. So that's about a 12 mile trip one way. So. Uh, all the hotels and motels in the area did benefit, uh, the restaurants did, the gas stations, you name it. It was uh, totally exciting and I think that the, uh, the TDC is, has done a super job. We're very pleased to be part of this program and one thing we can look forward to in November is the World Cup 
and I mean the championship when it when it comes down and that's another full week of racing with uh, three days uh, scattered during the week for the uh, world championship race and uh, it's another program that TDC will be getting uh, greatly involved in and it just brings in a ton of money uh, to the community uh, Key West will be full uh, marathon itself we figure anywhere between uh, a million and a half to two million dollars was brought in and spent in the community we're talking about anywhere between 15 and 20,000 people participated whether it was uh, uh, in their boats uh, whether it was watching from the bridge and one thing else that it brings into the community is that when the people get excited uh, about offshore racing and for those people that maybe didn't have their boats ready to go in the water two or three weeks before I mean they were getting their radios checked they're getting the bottoms of their boats painted uh, they're getting all sorts of things done fueling up so that you know also brings in dollars to the community because they're getting excited about what is happening uh, in their own community in the same way in Key West I mean we're talking about anywhere between two to eight hundred boats participated not only sweep boats not only check boats but everybody just watching this race and it was uh, totally exciting and the uh, the volunteers that participated did an excellent job uh, in mentioning of course the, the two prominent people of course John Carbonell is one of them in uh, promoting the uh, offshore racing uh, through the Conf Republic and also uh, uh, in reference to uh, Doug Marker uh, as the chairman in Marathon. Doug did a super job with his committee. Uh, he's got approximately a hundred people that get involved and then all of a sudden filters out to where you've got people knocking the door down just to participate where several years ago they said well we don't know whether or not if we were going to participate and now all of a sudden they're saying Doug can I help can I help so it worked out great and like I say TDC is very excited about being part of this and uh, it brings the money into the community both into uh, the entire Monroe County as well as Marathon and Key West when you have the races so it's something that is very very good basically dollars and cents wise I mean what's your estimate on what it brought in a marathon for this race this past weekend and what the World Cup does uh, uh, a full week event for Key West well, like I said in marathon we're talking about anywhere from a million and a half to two million and uh, we're talking about in Key West for the full week uh, plus that they're here uh, anywhere from two to three million dollars incredible it is and it's just like I say it's it's totally awesome great spectator sport to watch too and probably no better place to watch it than right here in the Keys and uh, I think this marathon race was really interesting this past uh, weekend mainly because of the changing weather conditions the past two years marathon has become known as maybe one of the fastest courses in offshore history two years ago Willie Falcone set the fifth fastest average course speed time over 98 miles an hour John Antonelli went over 100 miles an hour on the average speed uh, in the 1987 race. And uh, John Carbonell, everyone expected this race to be another quick one. However, the morning of the race, the wind started to blow. And as a result, the seas picked up, especially on the outer leg between checkpoint two and uh, checkpoint three. And as a result, there were some accidents on the course. Could you, uh, we already know about the Jesse James. They flipped over and... Uh, they're okay. Now, there were a couple of other accidents involving uh, one boat, the Miss Don Q Rump. Could you uh, tell us uh, what happened in that race, in that exact accident? Felix Rallies, uh, I know, uh, got his back hurt in that one. Well, what happened there, a lot of the accidents happened right as they came out of the bridge going into the open water. Uh, you get kind of a complacent as far as the calm waters on the Gulf side. They went through the bridge going out to Sombrero and when they started hitting about a mile away from the bridge when they started hitting the southeast winds, uh, Don Q stuffed it. The water uh, came over and uh, knocked the wind out of uh, one of the uh, brothers and uh, they thought that he might have had back injuries but it was just a matter of knocking the wind out of him and uh, they were able to handle that uh, right away. There were a few other boats involved in some accidents. The main attraction suffered some hull damage. Yeah, main attraction was also in that same uh, sector about a mile away from the bridge and uh, there was two boats in front of him and uh, Panama Jack was in front of him and said that he saw a helmet go by his head and uh, he turned around and uh, saw the boat completely under the water and uh, they got to the drivers and the uh, throttle man right away and there was nothing physically wrong with them other than the boat was totally destroyed in the front end of it incredible and uh, a former chief referee Raja Rogers who's racing this year uh, in his first uh, APBA race in the uh, sportsman class 
had a little bit of a toss, too. He got uh, his uh, shoulder separated, didn't he? No, what happened there also, he thought he might have a shoulder separation, but he just got a bruised uh, muscle because when the water came over the bow, it, the force of the water pushed his shoulder back, and he just had some strained muscles, but he's ready to go again for Fort Myers. It just goes to show you what an incredibly dangerous and awesome sport this is. And then uh, alluding back to the last two years in the World Championships, 85 and 86, when uh, tragedies did occur. One tragedy was the still crazy crew, Dick Fulham and Mike Papa, losing their lives in a stuffing incident in the 85 World Championship race, APBA UIM, here in Key West. And uh, IPI Sports put together a special tribute to the still crazy crew. Let's sit and check this out on the TCI Channel 5 Offshore Special.
the still crazy tribute called Wild Boys, put together by IPI Sports. I want to thank them for letting us play that on this program and thank John Carbonell for bringing it down to us. When we come back, we're going to have uh, some more footage for you and we'll wrap up the show. More details about last weekend's race, the 1988 Bud Light Marathon Oshawa Challenge TV special continues right after these messages. Welcome back to TCI Channel 5 as the Concord Republic Offshore Powerboat Racing Association presents the Bud Light Marathon Offshore TV special. And uh, as we come to a close on the show, a couple of things I want to talk to John Carbonell and Mike Pito about. First of all, John, this entire race was filmed by IPI Sports and uh, will be uh, out on national syndication sometime early in June. Isn't that right? Yes. And also, uh, Blue Lightning had uh, eight cameras that they were also filming it. So you'll also get to see it on uh, the summer of 1989 on the MGM release of Blue Lightning. So we'll be listening for details uh, on when exactly that uh, will be shown nationally syndicated on Channel 7 WSVN. Uh, details coming up. You can listen to my show on WOW FM. I'll have details coming up at the end of the month on when that will be out on national syndication. Mike, it's not going to be too long before the boats come rolling back into the Keys for the World Cup Championships, and I uh, want to encourage everyone to get involved, not only businesses, oh, yes. but uh, anyone who wants to be a volunteer. Well, exactly. The, uh, like I say, in the race and marathon, all the volunteers are what made it go. That's what makes a race uh, between the med boats, the sweep boats, the people that take care of public relations, uh, you name it. The entire community gets involved in this in the same way in Key West. You've got all your volunteers that are the check boats, the sweep boats, the med boats, the people in the different areas. Uh, I think it's just, it's, it's sheer excitement and it's something that everybody should get involved in and if it continues the way it's going, it's grown in the last three years uh, to just something that is just magnificent and TDC is very proud to be a, a part of this and a very big sponsor of bringing the people down because it's good for everybody and it's good for all of Monroe County. Anyone that wants to get involved in the offshore scene with the Concord Republic Offshore Racing Association should call Monday through Friday regular business hours 296-6166, 296-6166. Six, six. And something, Mike, that I was talking to John about is something that's probably not as well known, and that is that these two events, two offshore events, the Marathon Offshore Race and the Conquer Republic uh, uh, Mar uh, World Cup Championship are the two only major events in the Keys that are nationally televised, syndicated. Correct. Which right. brings a lot of publicity to the Keys. Oh, yes. All, basically, they're, uh, you know, when they had the Kazakari race, of course, that was filmed, you know, sent to Japan. So we're talking about uh, international renown, I mean, being seen all over, and especially uh, California, places like that, where we get an excellent rating. And uh, this is seen on national television. So it's something that's very important to the in to entire Monroe County. And like I say, we're very glad to be a part of it. Well, we'll look forward to offshore racing with the World Cup coming back in November. As that concludes our show for the 1988 Bud Light Marathon Onshore TV special. John, thanks for joining me. Looking My forward pleasure. to the World Cup. And oh, Mike? Yes. Very excited. It's just sheer awesome. 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 Yes, and that's a wrap for this show. Thanks for joining us. Be looking for our TV special coming up in November for the World Cup Championships right here on TCI Channel 5. That's a wrap. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in November.